Hey guys, I'm just gonna make this video and I'm gonna put it out there. I have 400 dual lands right now. This is a trade binder. Um, there's other dual lands on unlimited. So this is my unlimited collection of dual lands, right? I think I have more, nine. No, my underground C, I, I traded it away to a friend recently. But uh, yeah, dual lands, I consider the wheel of fortune a the wheel, if you will, this little wheel here is what I would consider the 11th dual land. We're gonna talk about power nine. I mean, we can just look at the Lotus. I don't know. You guys wanna look at Volcanic, Trop, Scrub, this, this. This is just how many I could fill up. Let's take a look at the Lotus because I think that's a cool land to look at. And it's surrounded by soul rings, so that's kind of cool. Um, let, me, let me go ahead and just say this. Sealed magic product, in my personal opinion, is especially modern product. I don't really know that much about vintage because I don't have that much vintage. I have some older stuff, mostly Homeland booster boxes. <laughs> I was buying Homeland from Norway. Oh, geez. Um, and um, sealed isn't going to fit my life. I have too much of it already. I probably have a thousand boxes of Magic the Gathering modern sealed, standard sealed. This would be like Modern Horizons, War of the Spark, Dominaria, original. I hate it. I hate it with a passion. It takes up so much space. I'm paying storage fees for it, and I, I don't like it. Um, singles, it's better than sealed because of storage. That's plain and simple. Uh, if you live in a big city, it doesn't even matter if you have a kids, it doesn't matter. Storage is the number one reason that um, I would I would pick singles over sealed, because you at some point in time you just simply don't have room for sealed anymore. Now on top of singled, uh, you would have modern cards, you would have standard cards, you would have EDH decks, and so on. I hate anything not on the reserve list. I think that is not investable. Now if you keep those decks sealed, I have like a vampire deck. It's like four hundred dollars now. I don't know what happened to it, but I don't know what I even paid for it, but it's like a, a very expensive rant vampire deck. Um, I really, really don't love the idea of um, sealed. So even that type of thing, even though I like it better having a sealed commander deck than a loose one, I think it's reserve list. Now in reserve list, you have various types of reserve list cards, one to $5 cards, five to $10 cards. Um, like Sarah Sanctum, I have a bunch of those. I'll probably make another video about like how I accumulate. I have like 80 of Sarah Sanctums, but only four cradles. You know, <laughs> it is the psychology of people selling stuff. They always keep their cradles and no one keeps their Sanctums. And now, you know, the Sanctums are not, they're not a bad card. They're definitely a top end card. But even beyond me just discussing about this, it's the dual lands. It's always been the dual lands. We'll take a look at the dual lands would make sense, right? Uh, okay. It's always been these guys. Now, alpha, beta, you know, I, I still can't tell the difference. You know, and what I mean I can't tell the difference is I can't tell the difference between a fake alpha and a real alpha outside of cards that have different text, different bubbles, different... Um, what's it called, dot patterns and so on. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I'm not needy, right? I get that. Uh, but I, I really am under the belief that if you had a professional cutting machine, you could take beta cards and just cut them in alpha with the pressure. So the reason that a lot of these fake cards get caught all the time is because somebody uses a nail clipper, scissors. It's not enough pressure, so it's not a clean cut, so you can tell from the indent that it's been manipulated. So that's my understanding of it. I guess we'll take you to a better looking page. I think I took you to Underground Sea. Underground Sea, let's do Tundra. Let's do Tundra. Tundra is a cool card. My, four, my first dual land that I remember, there was probably a ton of dual lands I pulled when I was a kid and I just traded them away because I had no idea these would be valuable. All right. Um, First and foremost, dual lands are better than power nine. I know for me, I'm gonna speak about my experience. 
dual lands due to EDH. So actually utility, it's actually playable. People want it. The demand for dual lands has never been higher. And you might be like, oh, how do you, how, is there any proof of that? Yes, card key in this buy list has never been higher for the majority of the dual lands. Out of the 10 dual lands, eight of them hit all time highs, including my good friend, the Underground Sea, which is the only one I really care about in the bunch. Yeah, uh, all, they're, they're buy lists, so it's not a fake price. It's not, oh, you know, this eBay show building that we gotta worry about, or Rudy Champagne. I mean, no, no, it's the buy list. And the quantity on each of the revised ones is always at 25 which is the max quantity that they will be willing to buy from you, Card Kingdom I'm talking about. Um, it used to be Star City Games at a buy list. It used to be Channel Fireball, which is now TCG Player, now eBay. They had a buy list. Um, it used to be a lot of different buy lists out there. Cool Stuff Inc. has one. But for me, it's Card Kingdom or bust because I've been buying from Card Kingdom since I was in middle school. Or at least uh, in... Yeah, definitely, in, at least in high school, probably ninth grade is when I started buying from them, seriously. When one of my friends, Dave, David, decided you know, to upgrade his deck. I think the, the card that he bought to make his deck really good was Mobilization. We just couldn't beat that stupid card from Onslaught. I don't know why the meta was really good. So he bought four of them, and I was like, wait, where did you, how, did you, how were you lucky enough to pull four of these? And he's like, oh, but there's a website that you can buy them from. I was like, oh. Okay, and then then, then the, the power levels continue to go up in our uh, tabletop gaming. So back to uh, Magic the Gathering and uh, what's investable and what I'm investing in. It, this is it. It's it. It's the dual lands. I don't want to buy nothing else. Like if you have, you approach me with your bulk and this and that. I mean, for Pokemon, I'll buy some stuff just because my girlfriend loves Pokemon. We're going to have a daughter. I assume that she will hate magic and love Pokemon because that's most people in life, right? That you meet. Um, it's just Pokemon. Magic is a one man hobby, right? So like, I, I don't really get to share the passion with anyone. I, as, as you grow older and as a dude, you're not going to find that many people who share, especially collecting to the level I collect, the passion. You're not going to find that many people in Houston or anywhere in Texas. It's hard to find people who love the game as much as I do. I, I still love the game. Otherwise, I wouldn't be holding on to this. I've been offered multiple times. People travel from who knows where, Hong Kong, Japan, and they just buy out my this bind, this particular binder. And the dual lands as a investment. Now, I don't want to. You, there are way better investments, stocks, bonds, S&P 500, real estate. No, these things that we would call traditional investments, they're a lot better, but they're not as fun. And honest to God, you might diversify. My S&P 500 has taken a massive hit. I basically bought at the top and <laughs> been slaughtered on the way down. Uh, stocks have not been doing good under Joe Biden recently. Um, Joe Biden's economy and, you know, war in the Middle East, potential war in the Middle East and so on. But the one thing that has gone up, uh, crypto has also gone down a ton. Real estate is a little sketch right now. So like if you put money in something, uh, this diversification has actually kind of helped me realize that this wasn't such a bad investment. I used to think this was a really, so parts of my magic asset portfolio are really bad investment. Sealed product, worst investment I've ever made in my life across anything and i've invested in mother effing kathy woods okay <laughs> that should tell you what, how i feel about sealed product uh thank god i didn't invest in metazoo though thank god i didn't invest in metazoo because i could have anyway but that's near here there this is way better than metazoo guys this i promise you will go up like five, 10 20 uh, assuming no reprint and magic 30th yes yes i get it i understand um, the arguments, but assuming no reprint, this is probably only going to go up because it's only gone up for 30 years in a row. It's like one of those things where people always tell you, oh, it's going to go down, guys. It's going to go down. And then like it just continues to tick up and it's like, okay, when's it coming down? Like I remember Underground C, the first GP Houston I went to, uh, this must have, this was after law school. This must have been between 2012 and 2015, something like that. 
the first GP Houston I went to, Underground C was $100. I was mind blown. Underground C probably hits 1000 before it drops down to 100 anymore. That's that's the trajectory of Underground C right now. In the next 10 years, 20 years, would you be all that surprised with inflation help if it was a $1000 card? I would not, honestly. <laughs>